interesting because we never know uh, what they go through during the day and how hard it can be for somebody to carry out a certain task. Yeah. Are you leading with love? And if you're not, why not? You know, do something you've always wanted to do. Take this opportunity as 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 a people to pause. To get better at empathy. What am I doing to help others? We have more in common than than mm. we don't. And of question. That's amazing. I want people to be less critical. <laughs> you know? You know, what are the innovations that come out of this? Upskilling myself so that I'm ready for a stronger cover. <laughs> This is Ringo. It all comes back. So be kind to one another. Connect, connect, connect. Wow, I like that question a lot. Um, internet connection <laughs> and good food. Noticing what is happening right now and then what would you want to change? So I think it's like helping people understand that the reality that they're in um, is not an absolute truth and that there are a their versions of reality. Just because they're working from home doesn't mean that expectation is that they should be like answering email at like midnight or working 24 hours a day. And like Remember that you're, you're not alone in this situation, they'll be upset. Mindfulness skills around being able to be present, being able to accept what we're going through, because I think acceptance is the first step to any kind of change. Well, if you're a student right now, you're probably asking yourself, what in the world am I gonna do for work next? For those people, I first and foremost have empathy because I saw this happen my first year in college was 2008 to 2009. An Ariana Huffington email but it's about forgiving yourself for not being as productive as you think you should be. They recovered, most of them, and jobs did eventually open up and that's going to be true this time too. But again, I, th I think the invitation is to say, okay, I thought I was maybe going to do something like this. Why? Who's it for? What's it for? Right? So what? What if I had the chance? What I do now? Don't put so much pressure because everyone's talking about this is a great opportunity to do things, but this is also a great opportunity to just take care of yourself. I mean, this is such a, an overwhelming and anxious time for us. And I think this, I mean, there isn't a better time than now to really look inward. Like the experiences themselves, which you know, realizing that life is a series of obstacles and that you're, you know, it's not going to be a cakewalk, I think that absolutely helps. Travel also helps um, because you're forced to reckon with a different reality, a different version of, um, of history many times. Uh, while we recognize the good that came from it, also understand that um, there was a lot of pain that we shouldn't forget about. I was always thinking that it's it takes time and, and now I think people realize how hard it is and I believe that uh, this crisis will help uh, people to build more connections and um, communities. Broken systems you hear educators talking about and do we shift you know, some of the testing and the skill requirements that we have going forward. So I think it will be interesting to watch that space on how are we, you know, grading kids going forward, right? Are we grading them on how they, how creative and, and you know, they're, they're thinking and problem solving, or do we go back to rigid tests and classroom environments? Really focusing in on my people and almost becoming even closer because they're like family to me. I wanna, I don't wanna disappoint them. I want to continue to pay them as long as I possibly can. I even, in order to do that, took a precaution measure of cutting my pay. Uh, for example, when I, when I was living in Korea, we had one day like some storm. I wanted to stay at home for three, four days. And yeah, I think it helped me a lot right now. To me, it's not that difficult, but I understand uh, that being in different countries makes you more human and, and makes you to see things uh, in a more empathetic way. As a civilization, we haven't had the same common enemy. Uh, I think COVID-19 is a common enemy to humanity. What, what can everybody do? That's what everybody should, should think about. I write every morning. I start with writing a gratitude journal. And then I do a time breakdown every single morning uh, what tasks I'm going to do at certain times. Work with them, partner with them where they are. Um, and it starts with their own well-being and it's okay not to be okay at this point. I think this pandemic has showed the ways in which knowledge and resources are siloed, perhaps in certain organizations, parts of the country, different levels. And I hope that this, I hope that we are able to come together more easily. I hope that resources and knowledge sharing is done 
more fluidly after this pandemic. Positivity isn't just something that just comes out. You have to practice it and you have to learn how to avoid other things. And, and maybe your screen or your what's on your phone, sometimes you're getting what's fed to you. And when you're, when you have to deal with that, you have to develop a skill to start to, you know, we, those that are dating probably can swipe left or right. You have to do that with the content that you're hearing from every source today. When things really started escalating in India and uh, the lockdown sort of came into effect, it's a very severe lockdown um, in India. It's very Wuhan style. Um, and, you know, my, my parents kind of freaked out and, you know, I just, there's just a lot of, a lot of chaotic and, and fearful energy. And I remember thinking to myself about the book, Man's Search for Meaning. You know, Viktor Frankl, a uh, psychologist in, in Auschwitz, and uh, I think he was there for three years, and he sort of saw how the human psyche broke down under uh, severe conditions, um, and, and what fear really does to people, and what, um, you know, the, the lack of control. And uh, I would really, I, I, first I think it was, I would ask people, you know, what are you grateful for? You know, just the basics, um, especially with, uh, when I'm in India, I'm always reminding myself, at least I have food, and at least I have shelter, and a somewhat decent Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> Um, so I think gratitude, what are you grateful for? I just want people to remember that they really need to be kind to one another because we're all dealing with this feeling of uncertainty and you know, you don't know what the next day is. Maybe change the way we work because I mean, at least in the US, I think like we, we live to work. Understanding that nothing is permanent. Even the idea that maybe you're so sure of right now that this is like exactly it, this is the business plan. So this is um, Easter tradition that we have. It makes us realize how um, interconnected we are and that we need a global solution. Really just embrace these precious moments of time where we actually have a lot more time on our hands. We're forced to look inward. I tell people, instead of holding your outcomes and your ideas with a clenched fist, hold them with an open palm. Like you have them and they're there, but it doesn't have to land exactly as that. It might land a little to the left, it might land a little to the right. Both are still wins. What makes us come alive? Um, even, even when we're confined in small spaces like this, how, what makes us come alive? <laughs> so then, um, I'm also curious what we're learning about the environment. What is the relevance of the nation state? Or how can I be better tomorrow? When there are so many other options that could be generated, but we keep thinking in a particular way or, or according to a particular process, it's outdated and not reflective of reality. Um, so I hope to see in general more creative thinking when it comes to decision making. People think that space is unnecessary luxury, right? Is this an opportunity for the nonprofit sector to change? And I, and I don't know, like, in a big way and like basically being less selfish and helping each other out. Be risk taking enough to tell me what you're thinking, tell me why you're thinking it. And if you can help folks know where we need to be or where we need to go, then empower them to figure out how do we get there. But we don't celebrate, you know, the small win. I am not in a morning person, so I'm not the best around getting up early. But you know, this morning I woke up early and I was just like, you know what, that's a small win because I don't always, and plus when you're working from home, it's like, do you really have to wake up early? You know, there's a lot of Korean, Korean communities, Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese, whatnot, but there wasn't a unifying Asian community. I hope that with this crisis, we'll break down that barrier and we'll just consider ourselves one family. I mean, so much is gonna change after this, after months of, um, of living our lives. Differently. We can turn around drugs, you know? Like before it would take years to get a drug approved and now they're pressing the gas. And so we've had so much attention paid to the technical skills, right? Coding schools and advanced manufacturing. And yes, those are absolutely important skills. But I think what this crisis is really bringing to the forefront is the folks that, you know, are good problem solvers can, you know, are good at, you know, flexible, critical thinkers and, you know, being able to change on the fly and just being, you know, more responsive to this thing, being creative in how we're, you know, approaching some of these, uh, you know, necessary changes. So I think it really is pointing to, you know, that, 
that call it the innovator's mindset of you know these soft skills you know do matter. I, I love all your questions. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> That's so cool! But what's here and what's now? To do something new uh, that you've always wanted to do. I have a lot of to-do sheets, you know, I have to do things I... What are you living for? How are you today? What is it that, that drives you today? Uh, yeah, by the end of this, well, I I'm going to be a Zoom expert. Hopeful, inspired, and just thinking, right? This afternoon, I'm learning to cook. I never before cooked in my life, so... <laughs> this. Live your values. Yes, can yeah. I see the view? Is it yep. an, oh my gosh. Just are you living authentically to, to who you want to be? But I'll admit that sometimes it can be challenging. <laughs> so my favorite quote is uh, one by Howard Thurman. It's a quote that I come back to all the time. Um, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive because the world needs more people who have come alive. Well, I mean, right now I'm just in a, in a yoga like studio room. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. Take 10. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just, it's, the sun has just come up. Oh, is that so mountain? Oh, you know me, Monica. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Cumpleaños feliz. <laughs> like, I want love and attention. You want some love and you sleep? It will grow more. Juni Shanger Kwila. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> if you're working with Monica, there is only thing, one thing you need to know is that the sky is the limit. That's so can, beautiful. You recognize? <gasps> yes, DC! Welcome to DC. <laughs> uh, never forget and always remember the, the, that the most important skill in life is creativity. Yeah, this is so fun. Um, yeah, really excited. Thank you so much for having me be a part of it. That's a skill that really will push you to the limit and really will help you to overcome this situation or whatever situation we are facing right now. <laughs>